Welcome back to the Academic Athletic Center here on Moorhead State University's campus, the Lynn Miller Room, our site for the Eagles Sports Coaches Show. Matt Ballard has joined us again, and Coach had a week off, had to enjoy all this free time that you had. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> you probably practiced a little bit last week, huh? Yeah, we went out a couple times this past week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to have uh, an extra week to uh, uh, spend some extra time on not only fundamentals and techniques, but different phases of, of your scheme, and then... It was a it was a it was a great week for the Eagles. It really was. Of course, uh, you know, a lot of time the little bumps and blue bruises are little things. You can recover in a week that you really don't go a hundred percent all out at it. But you know, sometimes the the bigger injuries you just can't. Well, one week you just won't do. Oh yeah, absolutely. But you know what? Uh, what was huge for us was. Um, um, you know, our, our main practice days last week were Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And normally, Tuesday and Wednesdays are your hard work days, meaning full gear and you're getting after it pretty good and full contact. Uh, but what we did this past week, uh, we went out what we call half shells. That's helmets and shoulder pads and shorts. And out the shorts, of course, are our girls, our pads, you know. Um, but, you know, you try to uh, get as much game work as possible, but without the banging, without going to the ground. Uh, and, and somebody that, you know, that's never been through this or never been around that, they really don't fully understand uh, the magnitude, the difference of that. And then what folks fail to realize is these guys have not had a break since the start of August. Um, so this is a, a huge break uh, from a physical standpoint. And, and then you're able to give your guys an extra day off. Uh, ask a guy that's leg weary and, and sore and bumps and bruises and aches and pains. You know, you give him 24, 48 hours extra uh, that he hasn't had. Let me tell you what, that, that works wonders for your body. And, and then if your body's feeling better, then it also helps you just from a mental standpoint. And it's just nice to have a break once in a while, you know. And they haven't been able to spend uh, a whole lot of time with family and, and friends because, I mean, these guys have been going from point A to B to C with school and working out and practices and games and traveling. Uh, so, it's you know, it's, it's nice to have that uh, little bit of a break and to get a refresher and uh, it's it's made a big difference for our guys. Yeah, I got to go home. Uh, some of them got to go home, not all Absolutely. of them, uh, but they got to go home. Probably went to their high school game. Uh, oh yeah, and it's always good to to get out of here for a little while and, and to come back. But then you get right back and work at it uh, probably Sunday, didn't you? Uh, we actually came back. Uh, we had Monday night football. Oh, okay. Uh, at at Moorhead. So uh, normally, you know, we come back in on Sunday evening. Uh, but that's that's the extra day that we gave them so that that would help them in their weekend with their travel plans. It wouldn't cut their, their time uh, as short, you know, with their family. They could come back a little bit later. Uh, and then we had, uh, you know, we had probably one of our better practices of, of the year uh, Monday night and just really quality reps and just really impressed with our work in, in all three phases. Well, you get the, like we said, the bye week out of the way, and then you – Going to welcome Jacksonville into town. They beat Maris 26-14 last week. Uh, that's coming off a win over Dayton on the road in Dayton. And so Dayton. they're on They're on a, a little roll right now. Yes, they are. Playing with a lot of confidence. They're playing very well, playing sound football. Uh, they are explosive in all three phases of the game. I mean, they can, they're very capable of big strikes and big plays. Uh, they have ability to control it or to strike quick. Um uh, uh, defensively, they're very relentless and always come with some kind of pressure and man coverage. There is multiple and change things up as much as anybody that we play. And then the last two weeks, uh, the difference in their ball game versus Marist and Dayton has been in the special teams area. You know, they've got a young man that's returned two kickoff returns for touchdowns. Uh, that was the winning score uh, versus Dayton last week. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's there's no breaks. There's no uh, weaknesses in this ball club. They're very sound. Um, uh, they're very talented, athletic, got great team speed and quickness. So uh, we're, we're coming out of the, the briar patch, so to speak, and there's a tiger out there. <laughs> you know, So uh, it's nice that we've had a, a week to concentrate on fundamentals and techniques and to polish things up in our schemes and uh, uh, to give us a chance, opportunity to play our best football game versus our best opponent to this date. 
So uh, it's a big challenge, uh, but our guys are going to be ready and going to be very excited coming out of the gate uh, playing Jacksonville. Kobe Warden was the one to return the kickoff 99 yards, and of course uh, Jacksonville has uh, the longest home winning streak in FCS at 16. It's a tough place to play down in Jacksonville, but uh, you know, as you said, the uh, young man throwing the football now for him, that's uh, not a Gregory. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank, thank you. Cade Bell is 21 of 28 in that, and he completed passes to eight different receivers, so they have a lot of people that can catch the football. You know, you, the old adage, be careful what you wish for and, and hoping and wishing and can't wait. You know, for, he's coming on the trip. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Well, but I, he, I he does radio brother. now. He yeah. does radio. Yeah. So, you know, at least he's not taking <laughs> snaps. But so you're so glad that that guy's gone. It's like, oh, my goodness. Look at look at this gorgeous, beautiful apple they picked off this tree. Very talented uh, quarterback. Uh, I mean, he will be the best guy, best looking guy getting off the bus. And when he walks out in the field, you're going to think, okay, this guy should be at Florida State or uh, Florida or something like that. I mean, he's he's a very impressive uh, looking football player. Quality quarterback, got great arm, got touch on the football. Smart young man, uh, spreads the ball around very, very well. Just great balance within our offense and uh, that makes him that much more difficult to defend. 2-0, and Jacksonville off to a PFL record, uh, of course, as we talked about the other day. Tough loss to Drake two weeks ago. Put that behind you. It's still anyone's game in the PFL. It absolutely is. Uh, the The champion of this conference is going to have at least one loss. That's a given. That's a guarantee. Now, who's going to uh, put that on Jacksonville and and uh, Drake and San Diego? You know, nobody knows until the end of those uh, fourth quarters of those ball games because it's going to go down to the wire. Uh, but it's it's going to be a dogfight. And uh, right now, it's anybody's game. Uh, we're still in the hunt, and if we uh, hope or want to try to get our hands on that trophy, uh, then we've got to find a way to uh, to seal a victory this week. Not not to come up short. Not let this one slip through our fingers. It's a it's a, a huge challenge for us. Uh, but I think our guys are. I know they've worked extremely hard. Preparation is the key. We could not. Uh, be preparing any better. Uh, very pleased with the way we're going about our business and, and how our guys are preparing. So now we just got to go out. We got to play sharp. We got to play disciplined. And uh, we got to put together a complete mistake prone free football game for 60 minutes. Matt Ballard is our guest, football coach here at Moorhead State University. This is the Eagle Sports Coaches Show. Uh, for this week, and of course, uh, coach, you know, you take a look, you're through four games. Uh, the game against Drake, I think we saw what we could do with the running game and the passing game working together. I mean, uh, Zach has had decent numbers. You know, he's 96 of 145 for 1,079 yards and nine touchdowns already this season. Uh, you know, he he's played well to, at times, but, uh, you know, like all the Eagles, uh, probably look to improve their game from here on out. Without a question, and uh, we have to just take that – next step uh, in our progression and in our improvement. We, we, we cannot try to force the issue. You do that and you start pressing. Uh, you don't do things uh, naturally. You don't do them correctly. Uh, we got to play within ourselves. We got to play to our strengths and what we do the best. Uh, is it extremely important that we're able to have a balanced attack within the run game and in the pass game? Absolutely. We have to be highly efficient. Uh, the problem versus Jacksonville is how they will slant and angle and blitz on you, uh, their speed and quickness. I mean, it, it's entirely different ball game versus these guys than it was versus Drake. Uh, Drake was a bigger, stronger physical football team, whereas Jacksonville, uh, they've got guys that not only have good strength, but they're smaller, they're quicker, faster. And so it's, it's, it's hard to, you know, get to those uh, points of, uh, of contact and sustain those blocks. Uh, but we must, in order for us to be successful, uh, to help our defense out and to move the football and try to put some points on the board to a secure victory, uh, we've got to have balance uh, within our attack Saturday. Uh, if we do that, hey, I, I like our chances. You know, we talk about the run game, how important it is to a Matt Ballard offense. 
you know, I think we saw uh, the best game out of Reese McShara at Drake. He went over 100 yards for the first time. You know, he's averaging 5.3 yards a carry. He's got 233 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Uh, you know, when you can average 5.3 yards, that's not bad. I think any back in the country would like to have <laughs> those numbers. And, of course, Reese would be the first one to tell you uh, it starts and finishes up front. Uh, we were able to do that, or he was able to do that, because of the uh, outstanding job that our, our men up front in the offensive line did. Uh, we controlled the line of scrimmage, and then Reese did his part. He did a great job staying on his route, his track, uh, reading things very well. I don't think there's a better back in the country as far as making cuts. I mean, he, I mean, he makes some cuts. It's like, I mean, you just you shake your head. It's like, how does a guy do that? You know, I mean, there's, there's, there's cuts that he makes that, I mean, guys in the NFL can't make. Uh, he, he doesn't have that NFL speed quickness. I didn't say that. I said the kind of cuts that he makes. So, uh, but Reese can't do it alone. You know, we got, uh, uh, hopefully we'll have Greg Lewis back uh, this week and be able to get some quality, you know, reps out of him. Blake Stanley uh, adds another dimension back there with his size and his strength, and he's still a guy that can make people miss and break tackles. So we're going to need everybody. Uh, to play their best ball game, to make their contribution, uh, to keep this a, a complete football game. Yeah, and we, we don't even mention the fact that Reese is their second leading receiver on the team as well. He's got 15 catches this year to go along with his rushing and his catching. And, uh, you know, a, and you expect more and more from him. And it seems like each week we see him getting better and better and better. Without a question, he's a guy that you cannot get the ball to enough. Uh, and when he gets it, uh, there's only probably one thing that's a guarantee uh, most of the time. The first guy is probably not going to tackle him. I mean, he has a wonderful knack uh, of making a guy miss and slip and breaking tackles. And, I mean, it's like he's got a radar around his his head that he can see and sense and feel guys and he sees colors and he's just, I mean, he's just an amazing back. He's a lot of fun to watch and there's no telling where he's going to go, what's going to happen at, at, at times. And I tell you what, that makes it tough on defenses because they, they never can get a really clean shot at him, you know? Uh, Dante Sawyer, uh, a lot of pressure on him, the fact that other teams gear up when they play you to shut him down. Still, you know, 27 catches and three touchdowns in the first four games. You know, folks are rolling their coverages that way. They're, they're uh, double covering, playing three over two, those types of things. So, uh, you know, when you've got the best receiver, uh, that's what that calls for. And uh, he, I think Dante likes that. Uh, it's a challenge for him. It makes him even more determined. I mean, I mean, Dante has always been a guy since he's been here that every time the ball goes in the air, he wants it thrown to him. Uh, that's a great thing. And he believes he can catch it and he can get it and, and he can make a play. I mean, he's just so competitive. So um, there, we know that there's going to be certain things that, yes, they're going to uh, take away. Uh, and it's going to be tough to get him the, the football at times, but within your scheme and formations and motions and, and other things that uh, Jacksonville has to defend, uh, you know, you cannot do that every single time. You know, so uh, we just got to play within the context of the, the game and what they're giving us and just be patient and disciplined this week. And I'm sure uh, Dante will get plenty of chances, get his hands on the ball, and, and make a difference for us. One o'clock kickoff, Jacksonville will come to Jane Stadium for a, a big game. And, of course, uh, of course, 62 reunion also this weekend, Coach. I tell you why, it's going to be a very exciting, amazing, uh, and very, very special weekend for a lot of people. And, you know, the 62 team it goes down as one of the all-time favorites uh, in, in the hearts and the minds of, of Eagle fans. And it's, it's going to be really a special thing to have most of those guys back and their families and hear the stories and honor them. And I know Coach Bentley, a longtime legendary defense coordinator and department chairman here on campus, and uh, they're going to honor him. I tell you what, it's going to be a great treat. They're uh, going to have a reception and dinner out at Eagle Trace on Friday, and then they're going to have some things in the morning before the ball game, and then they're yep. going to honor them at halftime. So I tell you what, it's, it's going to be really, really special. 1030 across from Jane Stadium is the Eagle Center, the new athletic center or new ac academic center for Morehead State athletes. The computer lab is going to be named uh, the Bentley Center, and uh, that will be a nice touch play the football game, honor them at halftime or honor 
Lord whenever they're going to do that. And then uh, then later on that night, they're going to ha- get together and uh, they'll swap old war stories. So probably the, the wee hours of the There'll be Sunday morning. There'll be plenty of those. be plenty of those. Well, Coach, good luck. Yes, Let's get back to Pleasure. the winning ways. Jacksonville coming into town at Jane Stadium, 1 o'clock uh, on Saturday afternoon. We'll have all the action beginning at 1230 on the Eagle Sports Network. That's going to do it. Matt Ballard has been our guest. We'll come back. This is the Eagle Sports Coaches Show.